Hello everyone, on today's update, I have a few things to share with you, as well as a few thoughts I'd like to share with you as well. So here are the updates for this week. I have a couple of things which relate to our church's involvement in Family Promise. Now, if you're not familiar with Family Promise, our church, along with 13 other churches in Douglas County, opens our facility to families who, for whatever reason, find themselves in a homeless situation. And once a quarter, we, as a church, provide space for lodging to four families who are connected through the Family Promise Ministry. Now, during our assigned week, we provide lodging and an evening meal, as well as food for lunches the next day. But due to the pandemic, families have been housed in off-site housing over the past 14, 15 months. So our sole responsibility is to provide food and, and grocery gift cards. Well, our Family Promise rotation begins this Sunday, June 20th. And if you haven't signed up to contribute, or if you have signed up to contribute, please have your donations into the church uh, this Sunday for delivery on Monday morning. Also, Family Promise leadership is reaching out to the supporting congregations, of which we are one, in efforts to gauge the interest of a return to in-person hosting of families. Now, our FSBC coordinators will be reaching out in the next week to survey our willingness as a church family to resume this part of the ministry. So please be on the lookout for an emailed survey to help us give Family Promise leadership the useful information that they need to move forward. Be in prayer for Family Promise leadership as they plan and pray for our church and for our involvement with this wonderful ministry. Pray for your involvement. And if you have any questions relating to Family Promise, you can contact the church office and we will link you up with the right individual that can provide you with answers. Now, the wonderful ministry within our community that we are also a part of is LINK. Link is a ministry to those within our community who are in need of a warm meal each day. The Link meal is coming up for us on Thursday, July 1st, so it's not that far off. There will be a Sign Up Genius email coming out soon and a sign up on the bulletin board in the foyer as well. Now, if you're interested in helping package to-go meal containers that day on July 1st at First Christian Church, we have spots available. So again, you can sign up, you can contact the church office for any questions that you might have, and we just hope that you'll just do your part to help meet the needs of those within our community who are finding themselves in dire situations. You know, we have Sunday morning Bible study classes meeting now at 945. We haven't gotten back to a full slate of classes, but we are working in that direction, and that's exciting for us. Sunday, we have a class starting back up. Rick Clock's class will begin next this Sunday, June 20th. The class will begin a study on the Sermon on the Mount, which is found in Matthew's chapter 5, 6, and 7. They'll meet in the student ministry room, and so that begins this Sunday morning at 945. Also, our senior ladies class will be restarting on July 11th, and they will meet in their assigned classroom just around the corner from the main entrance of the church. So that's uh, restarting on July 11th. Hey, just a reminder of our Church Center app and what's taking place. Our Church Center app is expanding to include an online directory, and many of you are aware of this and have already signed up for the app and have joined our online directory. If you haven't, here are a few of the details. If you're a current member or have attended our church regularly for the past six months, you will receive an email. You should have already received that email from Aaron with an invitation to join this directory. Now, if you haven't received the email, contact Aaron in the church office. But please note that this is not accessible to the public. It is fully customizable to your privacy preferences. For those of you wanting a picture directory, you can add your picture or your family's picture so we can put some names and faces together. But once you accept the invitation, just follow the setup instructions. Many of you have already done that. But you'll find your, the directory under the More column of the Church Center app. If you have any questions regarding the directory or email invitation, again, contact Aaron in the church office. A couple of things that I've been sharing with you over the past few weeks, and I'm gonna, going to share with you again because they are extremely important for everyone to hear, to pray, and to consider being a part of. One is Mission Arlington. Now, let me remind you just a few of the details related to this mission endeavor. Mission Arlington is our summer mission trip, which takes place July 31st, through August 7th. Mission Arlington is a mission project for everyone, not just students. Adults, you don't have to have a student in the student ministry. 
to be a part of the mission team. This is not a student ministry mission project. This is a mission project for everyone. Adults, students, children may be a part of the team. Now, children, if you're planning to attend, you must have a parent serving alongside you. Now, this church has always been involved in giving monetarily towards mission, and this is needed. Giving to missions is extremely important and rewarding. However, if you've never been a part of a mission team, you don't know what you're missing out on. I highly encourage you to pray about your involvement as a member of the team who will serve at Mission Arlington. There is nothing like a hands-on experience in a, on a mission project. It is one of the most rewarding experiences that you will ever be a part of. Serving on a week-long mission team can be life-changing. Pray. Make plans to be a part of Mission Arlington. Cost to serve on the team is $75. If you have questions related to this mission project, speak to Andy and he'll have the answers for you. Secondly, Vacation Bible School. July 25th through the 29th, 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Brand new material. It's later in the summer. It's going to be in the evening hours. It's going to be starting on a Sunday evening. and It'll be concluding on the following Thursday evening. Lots of changes regarding VBS for our church and community. But one thing that remains the same, and that is the opportunity for our church family to invite those outside our church to join us. So begin praying right now about who God would have you invite to Destination Dig. VBS is a great way to reach children, to connect with families who are not connected to a church. So pray, invite, and come and be able to answer that question. Who's your one that you're going to invite to join you at Destination Dig, July 25th through the 29th from 6 to 8.30 p.m.? One final thing, July 4th, one service only. No Bible study taking place that morning. Worship service will begin at 10 a.m., followed by a barbecue picnic taking place on the north parking lot. The meal will begin shortly after 11. You don't need to bring anything. Just come for worship and for the fellowship. It is going to be a great time to share with your entire church family. Everything will conclude in time for any 4th of July activities that you have planned. So come and join us that Sunday morning, 10 a.m., July 4th, for worship, followed by a picnic out on the parking lot. You know, it may be summer, but things are still happening around the church, and I don't want you to miss out on any of the great things taking place. So I hope that you will be a part of all that's occurring, not just on Sunday mornings, but at each of these activities I'm mentioning and those that will be on the calendar in later months. I close with this. This past week, Around 17,000 Southern Baptists gathered in Nashville, Tennessee to elect a new president to discuss matters relating to racism and racial reconciliation, gender, as well as matters surrounding the handling of past sexual abuse cases, and a number of other things took place during the convention. Clearly, by every article that I read, people spoke with passion in regards to these issues. Yes, there were people sharing from varying perspectives. However, in the outgoing President J.D. Greer's final address to the convention, he urged leaders and members of the Southern Baptist Convention to support sexual abuse victims, to stand with people of color in their struggle against racism, and to stop equating politics with spiritual truth or face losing the opportunity to effectively share the gospel with the nation and the world. He went on to say, when Baptists evangelize the lost, we work together. When we stop, we fight. When Southern Baptists focus on internal divisions and external politics, they're like fighting dogs with access to Twitter. He goes on to say, as God's people, we should stand with our brothers and sisters of color as they strive for justice. We are Great Commission Baptists. We have political leanings, but we are not the party of the elephant or the donkey. We are the people of the lamb. Which brings me to this reminder, found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. And it reads, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always even to the end of the age.
You know, we become so adamant about issues. We tend to pick sides. We speak up and we speak out about issues that we deem as important. And we expect every person to side with our thoughts and opinions. And if a person doesn't agree with us, quite often we wash our hands of them, even a brother or sister in Christ. We speak out about all of these issues, and yes, we should take a stand against things that go against the teachings found in God's words, and yes, we should speak out against evil, but we do more speaking out about the issues rather than speaking about the Savior. Matthew 28 here is a command to go, to speak up, and to start talking about Jesus. I wonder what might happen if we, God's children, began to speak about Jesus more often than we do. Pointing to the one who can change hearts, who can change attitudes, change minds. What might happen if the church began to share Jesus and his love rather than condemning and pointing fingers? What might happen if we reached out to all people and loved all people just like Jesus? I think I know what will happen. The church will be united and not divided. The church will begin to impact the world in ways just like Jesus and his followers did. I know what will happen. Acts 1.8 will happen. Listen to what it reads in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We, brothers and sisters in Christ, my church family, we have a responsibility to share Jesus and his love to the people living in Lawrence, Kansas, and throughout Douglas County. There are times that we've gotten off track, caught up on issues and politics and getting our own personal messages out. We've allowed our focus to be misplaced. The issues are important. Please don't hear me saying that they are not. The issues are important, must be dealt with, but they do not negate our responsibility to share the good news of Jesus Christ. They make our responsibility to share Christ even more important. So, let's keep our focus on our Savior and the instructions and commands we have been given. Let's speak up and talk about our Savior, Jesus Christ. Something to consider. Would you pray with me? Father, Thank you for the reminders of what our task is before us, our mission of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, of equipping the saints. Father, you put before us uh, the responsibility of, of sharing the good news in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the end of the world. And specifically for us, you, you have placed us here, and our responsibility before us is to share the good news with the people of Lawrence, Kansas, the people in Douglas County, the people in other communities that are nearby. Father, we have a great responsibility for us. Help us not to be distracted by all the things that are going on in our world, and then we forget that we're supposed to be sharing Jesus. We're supposed to be loving people, pointing them in his direction. Father, help us not to push those issues and those things that need to be dealt with aside, but help us to put them in proper order. Father, you have called us as a people to share your good news, to share your love. Father, we are supposed to be people that speak the truth to stand up against and speak out against the evils of this world. Father, as we share Jesus and his hearts and minds are changed, may we begin to see things change in our world, that issues are being dealt with, but dealt with in the proper order, the proper manner. Father, help us to keep our focus on Jesus individually and as a church. We thank you, Father, for not giving up on us, for loving us, for believing in us, and for inviting us to be a part of what you are doing. 
We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for letting me share with you today. Have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you in worship and Bible study on Sunday morning.